Hey everyone, it's Mike Shaw here with Planet for Photographers. So now you're comfortable using Planet for finding and setting the precise location of the sun and the moon to line e up either of them exactly with the key subjects in your scenes. And now you're curious what else you can do. Well, this video tutorial is going to explore some of the more advanced options of the sun and the moon finder. And to do so, we're going to use the Tunnel View parking lot in Yosemite National Park as our example location. Now the Tunnel View location is where photographers from around the globe have one of the most iconic views in the world. You're sitting at the western end of the Yosemite Valley, and as you're facing east, you have before you all of its splendors. Half Dome, El Capitan, the list goes on. In fact, this is the spot where I spent the night during the 2016 Perseid meteor shower, creating a meteor shower image that appeared in NASA's astronomy picture of the day. Now when you look at the parking lot for tunnel view like this, you realize it's not huge. There's really only room for a few dozen vehicles, and the overlook is only a few dozen feet in width. So by its very nature, you'd appear to be pretty restricted in your creative options. How could you possibly create an image that's any different from the millions of images of, that are made from the very same spot where you're standing? Well, this is exactly where a well-thought-out photography plan comes in. By giving consideration to the precise conditions under which you're going to make your photograph, you can dial in exactly the scene that you wish, that is, provided the weather cooperates. And the advanced features of Planet are exactly what you need to create such a plan. So let's explore a few of these options using the rising of the full moon next to Half Dome as our target, as viewed from Tunnel View. So to begin with, we'll set our camera location to be at the scenic overlook like this. And to choose our full moon as our target, we'll tap on the target list and select the full moon like this. Now, in addition to being a beautiful target in its own right, the rising of the full moon also has a significant other advantage for landscape photographers. And that's the fact that it rises more or less right when the sun is setting. And in fact, that's the reason that it's full. And because the full moon rises as the sun is setting, and of course sets as the sun is rising the next morning, there's still plenty of light in the sky. And this fact makes it possible to create an image that has both a well-exposed moon with lots of surface deal along with a sky with beautiful colors. Much later in the evening, there's too great a contrast between the brightly lit moon and the dark sky. Much earlier in the day, and the moon isn't full, and there's not the same contrast. And the added bonus for shooting the full moon at sunset is the opportunity to capture the full moon along with the deep blue Earth's shadow just below the belt of Venus shortly after sunset. So let's go ahead and get started. First we're going to switch to a normal map mode like this, and then we're going to pull up our view by tapping here and then rotating our camera's azimuth to include half dome by rotating the center of the green fan like this. And then, when we select Virtual Viewfinder like this, BAM! Look what we got. Here it is, a simulated view of Yosemite Valley created purely from the map data. I mean, come on, how cool is that? This feature just blows my mind. I have used it on many occasions to plan photography excursions all from the comforts of home. And in fact, we can enhance the three-dimensional appearance of our view further by tapping on this 3D button. And let's go ahead and zoom in just a little bit more by choosing a fo longer focal length by tapping here and selecting, I don't know, let's say 90 millimeters, and we're done. Now we can clearly see Half Dome here, Clouds Rest, and El Capitan. So now that we have our scene, let's specify where we want our rising full moon to appear. To do so, uh, you know that we can tap on this green hand icon to make it white, and we can make adjustments to the window size until it's just the way we want it. And we're good. Okay, so once we've done that, then we can select our starting date to be January 1st, like this, let's say 2019, and then select the on the ending date to be one year later. What this does is to bring the number of results when the full moon rises in that window to a manageable number, as you can see here. We can scroll through each result by tapping on the yellow forward and reverse icons up here, and isn't this just incredible? Okay, so now there's a simple way to refine your choices beyond simply scrolling through each one. What you can do is tap on the results area, and that'll bring up the results in this list format. The list has a list of the dates of each of the results, along with its elevation angle and the azimuth, as well as their percentage of moon illumination. But look at the last column for sun elevation. This can really give you some good insights because it tells you approximately at what stage we're at in terms of the golden hour, twilight, or night. 
And I really want to draw your attention to this distinction because it's definitely not the same as the time of official moonrise, because you will remember that's the point when the first moon first peaks over the horizon. So for example, the event this day during, occurs uh, on this one occurs during daytime, this one occurs during civil twilight, and this one occurs much later in the later stages of astronomical twilight. And I'm sure you can imagine how different each of these images will appear. In one of them, the sky will be blue, the other, the sky will be nearly black, and the other one will be this beautiful uh, colors of civil twilight. So one way to narrow your choices further is to simply apply any of these filters available at the top. For example, we can select golden hour, and that gives us just these results when, for example, half dome would be lit with a beautiful reddish color because the sun is still above the horizon. So let's look at each of these two results to see what's going on. Now for this first one, which happens on February 18th, 2019, you can just see the full moon peeking over the horizon. And if we switch our time display to the minute option by tapping down here like this, we can then scroll through the time to literally watch the moon rise next to Half Dome. Just incredible. And if you look very carefully at this time display, you can also see the sun elevation angle displayed. And this is very helpful because some great sky colors appear when the sun is right around zero degrees. So we can play around with the combination of the moon position and the sun elevation to decide the absolute perfect time to create our image. Okay, so occasionally I'm asked if this process takes away all the fun. You know, and my answer is no. <laughs> Here's why. I have had my share of many a night attempting a moonrise, a sunset, or some other event only to be disappointed by missing it by a matter of minutes or being at the wrong spot by a few hundred yards. And I don't know about you, but I find it much more enjoyable to make a plan so when I'm in the field waiting for the moon to appear after flying out to an exotic destination, I know exactly what's going to happen. Because remember, in landscape photography, there is no rewind button. All right, so now when you look at our next results on December 10th, we see a similar appearance, except the moon is offset uh, slightly to the north. And again, we can adjust the position of the moon and the sun to give us the exact shot we want. So finally, let's talk about some of the more advanced user interface options. Now, the first feature I want to point out relates to setting the dates. As you saw earlier, if we press on the start date, for example, we can choose from any of these options, and we can also choose from the date option at the lower and left to choose our starting date. A faster way to get there, however, is simply to long press on the start date like this, which brings us straight to the date selection pop-up window. So you might find that to be helpful. Same thing for the end date. We long, can long press on that to go straight to the ending date pop-up window like this. And since I'm not too concerned about precise dates, I'll often go to a broad date range like, I don't know, two years, for example. And as you can see, there really aren't that many options to fit the bill. And this is exactly why a good plan is just so important. But by the way, look at this one on November 28th, 2020. This one has some pretty good potential, wouldn't you say? Maybe I'll see you there. Now we can also select Civil Twilight as another excellent time for photographing the rising full moon. But as you can see, even adding this option only adds a small number of dates. And if you'd like to reset the filters, you can simply long press on the result like this, and that'll do the job. And finally, if you want to reset the viewing window altogether, simply long press on where it says full moon, and that'll reset the elevation angle range to zero and the azimuth range to any. Well, I hope that helps. This is an incredible feature of Planet for Photographers. I know you're going to find it useful. And until next time, good luck with your planning.